Hey, what is up? My name's Noah and welcome to the channel. This video serves as the second part to an ongoing video series where we're building our very own self-balancing robot. If you haven't already, check out part one by clicking the corner or the link in the description so that way you'll be able to watch this video up to date. Since the end of the last video, I've been able to paint the top and back panels red. So it's looking really good and accurate to the model we made in the last video. I also added some heat shrink tubing to the end of the coat wire stabilizers to give it a cleaner look and to take off the sharpness of the cut metal. Today, we're gonna be installing the electronics. Here is the full wiring diagram of the electronics that we'll be installing today. As you can see, there's a lot going on, but don't worry, we'll take things one step at a time to make sure they turn out nice and neat. If you'd like to learn more about the project, I'll be posting all CAD and code on my GitHub, which is linked in the description. Before we get into the build, let me go over all of the components that we're gonna be using and a little bit of background on how they work. At the core, we're gonna be using an Arduino Uno. This is a great board that uses the Atmega 328P microchip, runs at 16 megahertz, and is equipped with all of the analog and digital pins that we need. To drive the motors, we're using this L298N motor driver. With four transistors on either side, this module uses a dual H-bridge to control the direction of each motor and uses pulse width modulation from the Arduino to control their speeds. To accurately set the velocity of each wheel, we're using two Hall Effect Quadrature encoders. These work by attaching a spinning magnet to the output shaft, which triggers two Hall Effect sensors that pulse more rapidly as the wheel spins faster. For rudimentary control, we probably won't use them but they'll be more useful when we want the robot to go over different surfaces that have different coefficients of friction, like grass, concrete, versus hardwood floor. Arguably, the most important component I'm going to be using is the MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit. This module uses both an accelerometer and gyroscope to get data, but we're only gonna be using the gyro to read the angles of the robot in a single axis. Check out the link in the cards or in the description to get a full explanation on how a MEMS gyro works. In the future, I'll be using this NRF24 LO1 to communicate with a remote control. It's a single chip radio transceiver that runs at about 2.4 gigahertz. For now, we just wanna make sure the robot can stand up on its own. So we'll save this one for later. To start, we're going to be wiring up the quadrature encoders. We want to be able to unplug these motors if we need to make repairs, so we'll start by soldering header pins onto the PCB. Next, we'll be soldering wires to those header connections and putting a female end on the other side. For right now, we're only going to attach the positive and negative leads of each motor to the female plug. Later, we'll come back to wire the quadrature encoders and apply heat shrink tubing to keep everything insulated. With the motors ready to go, let's do some quick tests with the MPU 6050. First, we've wired it up to the Arduino on a breadboard. Next, we're uploading some code to the Arduino so we can see all of the angle values in the serial monitor. Here we have the yaw in the first row. Pitch angle values in the second row of numbers. And the roll axis values. This way we can make sure our inertial measurement unit is working the way we want it to. With all of that out of the way, we'll start to lay out our electronics according to the model we made in Fusion 360. 
We'll be attaching everything using nylon PCB standoffs. So we'll need to drill some more holes into the polycarbonate. Next, we'll attach everything just like we planned in our CAD model. And now it's finally time to get our motors wired up. We'll start by making a small ribbon cable so we can connect the Arduino to the motor driver. And once we solder it to header pins on the Arduino, we'll get something that looks like this. Just like in our CAD model, we'll be using three 18650 lithium ion batteries in series to power the motors, and a separate 9 volt battery for the Arduino and other logic boards. Having two separate batteries makes the robot easier to stabilize by increasing the moment of inertia about the pivot axis, prevents the logic boards from drawing too much current, and simplifies the circuit design. And with that, we have the motors, motor drivers, and batteries wired up and ready to go. And I am really liking how this is turning out. As a quick test, I'm gonna upload uh, some quick code I'm gonna write just to see if the motors work. Let's check it out. With our motors working, we'll move on and mount both the MPU6050 and NRF24L01. To do this, we'll be using this prototyping board. We'll also be able to use the extra pads for power distribution. We'll solder the components onto the pre-tint pads and then attach the wires directly from the header pins to the Arduino. By tucking most of the wires behind the green protoboard, we end up getting a really clean look with the switch, IMU, and wireless transceiver on display. To finish up, we'll mount a potentiometer. This will be used to set the set point of the IMU in real time, so we don't have to keep fiddling with the values in software later on. I've designed a mount and knob for the potentiometer in Fusion 360. Once we print it out, we'll wire up the potentiometer and then we'll be ready to go. And with that, we're done. We've turned this diagram into reality.
I am super happy with how this turned out. This was my first more elaborate Arduino project, so I think all things considered, it turned out really well. There were a couple of things that I just didn't show on camera, just for the sake of the video not being too repetitive, and getting the video together is most of the work at this point. But now, we're ready to get this thing working in the next video and upload the code that we'll write. If you like what you see, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you can stay notified on when new content like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Noah, and I'll see you around. Bye.